Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about light academia versus dark academia. I wanted to make a video like this for a while because I feel like on the internet, on booktube and in many different internet spaces, dark academia is so incredibly popular and I can really see why but to me personally light academia doesn't get nearly as much love and out of the two it is my much preferred aesthetic and genre of books and in general vibe so if you've never heard of light academia before or maybe you've tried some dark academia books or aesthetic and you found that it's not quite for you then hopefully this video can be your introduction to light academia and see if that is more your wavelength i'm going to talk about these two different types of academia and what they mean and what they kind of mean as an aesthetic and also what they mean for books and literature and then I'm going to give you a book list, a book recommendation list for light academia. If you've never heard of this genre before, if you want to start reading more of it, maybe you've read one and you want to find more, then that's what's going to be in this video. So light academia is kind of easier to define once you've defined dark academia and if you don't know what dark academia is, it is actually mainly an aesthetic but it's also a genre of books. But dark academia is kind of a idealized version of a college or university experience. The aesthetic is very gothic and dark but focuses on like lots of like traditional outfits or like school uniforms or tweed and plaid. Dark academia books though usually focus around an educational institution and usually a very traditional type of institution or a very elite institution and it is usually following kind of morally corrupt individuals pursuing knowledge or status. Usually there's lots of tropes about rich people and privilege. The types of things people study in these books are usually classic literature, languages, Latin, occasionally the sciences, but usually it's very traditional, it's very aspirational, and it puts these kind of subjects on a big pedestal. I'm interrupting this video with myself because I also think it's interesting to talk about where these aesthetics have come from and when they got popular. Dark Academia became popular very much on Tumblr, especially when I was on Tumblr in like 2015, 2014 era, but it had a huge surge of popularity during the COVID pandemic. And I really think that that reflects a lot of the fact that young people and young teenagers were stuck at home and then having this idealized version of what it would be like to go to a school. And lots of people weren't able to go to school at that time. So I think out of that era of being really disconnected from our schools and institutions, and people not being able to go to a university like they'd always dreamed. Dark Academia had a huge rise in popularity, especially for young people who were actually missing out on that experience. Also Dark Academia, the protagonists are usually young or more naive or more insular in a way. It's usually based at these institutions, so either schools or colleges or university students. So the age of the protagonist tops out usually around 21, 22, but you often have these books based around teenagers. I know that going in because for me, as I get older, I find it more rare that I find following very young adults to be my favourite kind of book. And I'm not saying there's anything against young adult, I've always read young adult and I will continue to read it. But for me, Dark Academia does lean a lot more young adult. So if you're less interested in that, then keep that in mind. And that leads to me talking about one of my issues that I've had with Dark Academia in the past is that there is Dark Academia that manages to critique these institutions in a very real and like rigorous way. But a lot of what Dark Academia is out there is really more about the vibes. If you really like The Sound of Dark Academia, my favourite Dark Academia book is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. She is one of the people who kind of really made a name for this genre in books. It has complicated morally grey characters, it discusses elitism and the pursuit of knowledge. This is my favourite Dark Academia book by far. I would say I really enjoy some other ones but out of the true, true like Dark Academia books, this one I think does it the best. Another Dark Academia book that I can truly with my whole heart recommend is Blood Over Brighthaven. This one I would say leans much more towards a fantasy than a true Dark Academia book but 
if we're talking about critiquing institutions of power, the pursuit of knowledge, kind of the hubris of the elite, then there is so much of that in this book and more. And this book is coming out this month. And honestly, it's been one of my favourite reads of the year so far. I absolutely love this book. So maybe not a true Dark Academia book, but worthy book anyway to read. You should definitely read this. Another couple I've really enjoyed are Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is also a much more fantasy leaning book. And finally, another one of my favourites is the Scholomance series, which starts with A Deadly Education. These books, I'm also not sure I can fully put within Dark Academia. These books, again, are slightly more fantastical leaning. They are primarily a fantasy book, uh, but they are set in a school. They don't have a lot of the tropes and trappings of the Dark Academia. To be honest, one of the reasons why I like these two books that I'm talking about a lot is because they're not true Dark Academia. I've read many other Dark Academias. I'm going to put them on screen now as just kind of a group here and say, I've read all of these and I didn't like them that much. So if you have other recommendations for me, then I'd be love to hear it. But instead, let's move on and talk about something I do love, which is light academia. So light academia is, as it sounds, just a lighter version in every way. Instead of being kind of this quite gothic, traditional setting, it's a much more cosy vibe. It's not necessarily school-based, it's kind of experts or researchers in their field. It can be a little bit more adventurous and it focuses more on like adventure and exploration. It is lighter, usually in subject matter, but it doesn't always have to be. It's not necessarily conflict-free. But I think because it's more about like a lifelong learning, you don't often get the message of like arrogance of youth as as one of like the themes in the books, which is like something that I prefer. Often as well, I found with light academia books, it has more of a memoir style. It's someone looking back on their life or it's kind of journal entries, which can be very fun. I think that's a really fun way of reading a book. And usually they do have more humor and more lightness in the stories. Also the subjects covered themselves can be a lot more esoteric. They're not just like these traditional elitist subjects. Light academia can be covering literally any kind of topic that you can think of. But it does usually follow someone who is like an expert in that field or like on a lifelong journey of learning. Before I jump into the recommendation list though, I do want to say with both these different types of genres, there's kind of a difference between books that are light academia or dark academia themselves and then books that give the vibe or the aesthetic of light academia. And kind of what I mean by that is because these are aesthetics kind of first and then kind of genres of books. So when you're thinking about a light academia book or a dark academia book, it could be that the book itself is dealing with these themes of that kind of definition that I've described, but also it could be that characters who are in light academia or people who have the aesthetic of light academia would read books such as these, if you get what I mean. There's kind of that distinction between like someone in the in a dark academia book would read gothic horror novels, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those gothic horror novels are dark academia if you get what I mean, but they kind of are in their own way. There's kind of two ways you can think about the definition of these books. But let's get into talking about the books and I can explain to you why these books are more my type of thing than Dark Academia. I think from the way that I've described these books, I think you'll already be getting like why I prefer Light Academia in general. I prefer stories that have an older protagonist normally. I love learning about a random topic from someone who's an expert. I like cozy stories. I like fantasy. I do occasionally like things that have like morally corrupt main characters, but I much prefer it to be like a grumpy old professor or researcher who is learning how to love and have friends as opposed to someone who is morally corrupt in the way of like killing anyone in front of them to get their goal and like hoard all the knowledge that they want. Do you know what I mean? That's just like a, a very drastic comparison between the two vibes but I think you'll get what I mean. So if you think that you would like light academia, then I have some books here to tell you about. First and foremost, and I think anyone who is familiar with light academia will know that these are going to be probably first on the list, these books, 
um, and that book is the Emily Wilde book. So this book is a series and these are the first two books in that series, starting with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and then the second one is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. These are like very typical light academia books. You have Emily Wilde who is an expert in her field of researching the Fae. She is a genius scholar and a meticulous researcher and she is trying to write the very first encyclopedia of all of the fairy lore that she's learned throughout her career. These books are written in journal format as you're following Emily on an expedition as she is trying to write this encyclopedia. And because you're reading Emily's journals, you pick up a lot of her knowledge and research about the Fae. There's like lots of footnotes and stories about the Fae. But also in these books, Emily is not very good with people and sometimes her research means that she has to interact with the wider public and sometimes even get their help. She has a kind of academic rival slash good friend who is extremely bad at research but extremely good with people and he joins her on this expedition and basically you're just following these two people who couldn't be more opposite from each other and I just absolutely love these books. They are so cute and whimsical and light academia all over and if you haven't read them yet you absolutely need to. They are so 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 much fun and that's my first recommendation for where to start with light academia. Also just like this is the vibes, like this is exactly the vibes that I want to create in my house, my aesthetic and also with my books so that is perfect light academia recommendation. Coffee break, I blended up my coffee today and it actually worked really well. But anyway, next up, basically after I read those books, I went searching for something that is of a similar vibe. And so if you are too looking for that, this is the book that I read next and I can highly recommend it. And that book is The Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent. So this is the first book in a series and I do actually have the second one. So this is the first book and then this is the second book, Tropics of Serpents. And these are also classic light academia. These are also journal based stories. So you are following Lady Trent. And the first book follows the first portion of her career and her childhood and basically these books are less fantastical than the Emily Wilde books but are more based as like an alternate history I would say and in these books dragons are real and they can be studied you know like any other animal and basically Lady Trent as a child has always been absolutely fascinated with dragons but she's been brought up to be a very proper young woman. And so this first book is tracking her journey from being like a very bookish young woman into the first steps of her career as being like this pioneering researcher of dragons. It's much more like historical leaning, I would say, than Emily Wilde. So if you like less romance and more historical then definitely go for this rather than Emily Wilde. There is still romance in this, it's like just much more of a quieter kind of subplot. I really really enjoyed this book, I really enjoyed the voice of Lady Trent as she is an old woman writing down these stories of her young self and you can really see how much she's grown and how she looks upon like the young version of herself and the arrogance and bravery of her younger self. They have like a very wry kind of humour to them as well. These books also have a very strong feminist message. She is pushing against a society that does not want to allow her any kind of freedom, let alone like scholarly freedom. And they are just so much fun and I cannot wait to read the second book in this series. And I think there's at least four. And also they have pictures in them because they are kind of like journals. So occasionally you get pictures of sketches of the places that Lady Trent's been and sometimes you even get little pictures of the dragons which is really cute. I think it's such a fun addition and it really like adds to the realism of these books. Like these feel like you kind of forget that like dragons aren't actually real or they didn't like used to be real. But yeah these books are so much fun. So that's my second recommendation. Ignore if you can see where I spilled coffee on myself but my third recommendation I feel like I might have to explain myself a little bit more with this one but bear with me. My third recommendation is Piranesi. So some may say from the cover or maybe from what they've heard that this might fall more into dark academia. I strongly disagree. I think that this book is light academia. At least my own definition that I've made up for light academia. This fits exactly within that and it's also one of my favourite books. So this book is about Piranesi and Piranesi lives in the house and he has always lived in the house and the house is made up of 
endless corridors and vestibules and half of it is kind of flooded and half of it is open to the sky and it is endless and also filled to the brim with statues. Piranesi lives there all alone but occasionally gets visited by the other who is the only other human person that he comes in contact with and Piranesi spends his days kind of researching around the house and making and Piranesi spends his days wandering around the house and he also writes down his observations in his notebook and he occasionally helps the other to find out the great and secret knowledge. But one day Piranesi notices that maybe there's signs that somebody else is also moving around the house and that's all I'll tell you because this book is not too long and it's such a fun exploration and something to discover for yourself. Also just want to show off the hardcover edition that I have here. I just absolutely love this book and I love the end papers as well. I'm saying that this is a light academia book because it's not based in any kind of like educational institution but it is about the pursuit of knowledge and one man's journey to get there. Piranesi himself is just also a like ray of like sunshine and joy. I just love him as a character. So this is my example of stories that aren't necessarily all lightness but are still light academia because it's about learning and gaining knowledge but also through kind of human connections and exploring if you get what I mean. So I don't want to tell you too much about this book because it's like I don't know if you've read it you'll understand but it's so much fun. It's also obviously read through journal entries from Piranesi himself which all of these books so far have in common which doesn't necessarily make it like academia it's just something I've noticed within the genre as I'm defining it so yeah that is the next recommendation so the next two are two classics that I want to talk about so obviously these books are classics first they were well before light academia it was even a thing but I think both of them fit within this like sub genre of light academia or definitely if you're interested in this genre then you will also like these books for the reasons I about to outline. The first one I want to talk about is Little Women. So this book is about four sisters and their mother. And this book really is about their domestic lives as they live together and grow up. The reason I'm saying it does count for light academia is because all four sisters have their own journey that they go on, their own learning. And I think in particular the journey that Jo goes on to become a writer in this book really fits with light academia. All four sisters kind of choose a different path or they have very different personalities. They go down different parts in their life and the whole book has that real cozy light academia feel also this edition has loads of really cool illustrations in it this definitely like leans over into like the cottage core aesthetic as well if you know anything about that but I definitely recommend it for light academia as well. And then the other classic I wanted to talk about is Anne of Green Gables. This one is actually more set in a school. But you are following red-headed orphaned Anne as she arrives at Green Gables. But her new adoptive parents are like less than sure. They thought they were adopting a young boy to help with the farm work. And so they're not sure what to do with Anne at all. But she very quickly burrows her way into their heart. And Anne is like the most imaginative and whimsical child. And she she loves learning and going to school. She loves the natural world around her and she just like really quickly charms absolutely everyone in her life and also you the reader as well. So this one definitely fits within a light academia. It is such a sweet little book. So cozy, it's so light and you will just end up falling in love with Anne. Okay and then the last couple of books I want to talk about are actually different from all the others again in the fact that they're actually non-fiction books but I would be remiss not to talk about these books because because firstly they fit so well into the light academia genre despite not actually being novels and also I think that this writer is one of my favorites of all time and so the books that I want to talk about are Robin Wall Kimmer's books. So she wrote Braiding Sweetgrass and also Gathering Moss. And I've read both of these books and they are absolutely fitting within light academia. And I'll tell you why. Obviously these books are more academic, especially Gathering Moss. It's much more specific on imparting actual academic knowledge onto you. But these books are just so beautifully and powerfully written. Uh, they are one of my favorite this is one of my favourite books of all time and I do a reread as well because I just absolutely love it. The tagline for Braiding Sweetgrass is Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants. So these are a series of essays written by Robin Wall Kimmer who is a scientist, a botanist. 
but also an indigenous woman. And the essays are written so beautifully as just reflections on life and human nature and the way in which we relate to the natural environment. And she uses her spiritual knowledge as well and her indigenous background to like further the connection that she has towards her scientific pursuits. They are so beautifully written. They make me literally cry. There's an essay about strawberries and it just like makes me tear up. They talk about everything from like family to language to like how we're building a home and communities. These books are just so incredibly special, especially Braiding Sweetgrass. I would say Gathering Moss is a lot more specific about moss. I personally love moss and I'm kind of obsessed with it and so I absolutely adore this book. But if you're wanting more of a general overview or to dip your toe in then I would definitely start with Braiding Sweetgrass. If you never read non-fiction as well just try this first book because I honestly think it will change your life. It's changed mine and I'm utterly obsessed with it. So that is Braiding Sweetgrass and Gathering Moss and that is the final recommendations on this list. So I really hope that you got something out of this recommendations list and this video in general. I just wanted to put my thoughts out there on why light academia is so much superior to dark academia because I hear so much more about dark academia especially around this time of year all of the gothic books come out all the dark academia books come out in October and September it's very autumnal so I just wanted to shine this light on light academia. If you have any other recommendations for me that are light academia, then please let me know. I would love to keep reading more and more in this genre of book as I'm like quite frankly obsessed with it. But please remember to subscribe if you haven't already and maybe hit the notification bell as well so you know the next time I upload. And leave me a comment below either with a recommendation or a book that maybe you didn't know about on this list that now maybe you're gonna check out. Or if you think that dark academia is way better, then tell me why in the comments as well. But that's all from me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!